Hi everyone, I'm here at the Royal Society and behind me is an honour board, the presidents of the society all through its history. It's a who's who of science, but perhaps the most famous of all is their 1703 to 1727, it's Sir Isaac Newton, arguably the greatest scientist of them all. Now he's famous for all sorts of things, but perhaps the thing he's best known for is gravity. And there's a famous story about him watching an apple fall from a tree and having the inspiration, having the idea that maybe that apple was falling for the same reason that the moon and the sun and the planets were moving. Who knows? Who knows what happened? In fact, I've always thought maybe the story wasn't really true. Today we're going to try and find out. And actually, I probably won't need these. So now I'm with Keith, the head librarian here at the Royal Society. This is a lovely story about Isaac Newton, but I've always thought it's a bit of a fairy tale. It's too good to be true. And you're, you're going to set me straight? Of course it's true, yeah. Of Would we it's tell true. you anything different? You have to prove that to me. Here it is. This is an old manuscript, so this is original handwriting. As you can see, it's memoirs of Sir Isaac Newton's life, collected by William Stukeley, who knew him. This is a contemporary of Newton. He was living around... Indeed, yeah. So he lived in London in the 1720s at the same time as Newton. So Newton's quite an elderly figure by then. Uh, so he, he talks to Isaac Newton, gathers stories. So it's a collection of anecdotes, and this this is the big one. This is the one that everyone knows. Stukeley is with Isaac Newton at his home in South Kensington. They're in the garden and he says, after dinner, the weather being warm, we went into the garden and drank tea under the shade of some apple trees. So he's, so he's kind of recalling an anecdote here of him just hanging out with Isaac Newton and what they're talking That's about. That's right. And then Newton starts remembering the apple tree story. Amidst other discourse, he told me, he was just in the same situation as when formerly the notion of gravitation came into his mind. What does it say next? It says, why should that apple always descend perpendicularly to the ground, thought he to himself, occasioned by the fall of an apple, as he sat in contemplative mood? Well, those of you watching may think this book is going to be our object today, but it gets even better. Let me grab some other stuff that Keith has got for us and show you that. Okay, Keith, what treasures have you uh, dug up for us here? These are all made of wood. The wood, the, the apple tree wood, yes. So let's get this straight. These three objects are all made of wood from the apple tree at Woolsthorpe Manor, Correct. where Isaac Newton grew up. That was maybe the apple tree he saw the apple fall from that made him think about gravity. Exactly right. Now, I know what you're thinking. These must be the objects that today's video is about. But we can do even better. Let me get the piece de resistance. This is it. I feel very privileged to be holding this. This is another piece of wood. It's in a, pl it it's in like a, looks like sort of a vacuum sealed plastic bag. Well, not just any plastic bag. This is a special NASA space bag. A NASA space bag. Yep. Go on then, what, so, tell me. This particular piece of Newton's apple tree, and you can see it's genuine because it says IN on it, uh, went up into space. It went on the space shuttle Atlantis and into the International Space Station. And zero and liftoff of space shuttle Atlantis. So this piece of Isaac Newton's apple tree has been in space, on the space station, in the space shuttle, and now back here. What have you got here? This is a messy old envelope, but really one of my favourite things. This is a US government messenger envelope. When the material went over to uh, NASA to be sent out up into space, of course it came back again, and this is the envelope it came back in rather, rather beautifully. It's, it's, it's space buffs love this kind of stuff. Images from the flight, from the mission where this thing actually flew. So this looks like it's looking out the window of the space station, and we can Indeed. see the Earth. And there's a picture of Isaac Newton himself, which looks like it's been kind of stuck to the window as well. And then it's been autographed here by the astronaut Piers Sellers. That's right, yes. Who is a British astronaut. Indeed he is. Uh, so he was the man that took the Isaac Newton wood up into space. That's the picture that's attached to the window. Of course, because uh, Isaac Newton was a good scientist. He had to observe the experiment that we did up there. So we had to send Isaac Newton up into space too. So there's the picture of Newton, the picture of Newton attached to the window of the space station, and to top it all off, the best bit of all, the piece of wood that was taken up by the astronauts. So there we go. 
Space Shuttle Atlantis now traveling 389 miles per hour. It is now on final approach to the Kennedy Space Center. The gear is down and locked. And Houston Atlantis, we have wheel stop. We'll go over to 5-3, and uh, we'll finish up post-landing and turn this incredible machine back over to the 